to be or not to be? That is the question. I hope it's not extra minutes. It's been so long since I made a video, a proper video that is. Um, you know, I haven't been mentally stable to do basically not only YouTube videos but anything in life. I'm trying to um, hold myself together and get back. what I have left, you know, in my life, so I'm working on my assignments again, and I don't know, after my suicide attempt failure, um, I have been so confused afterwards. I feel like the shock is within me and my bipolar disorder has become worse. Bipolar disorder is uh, uh, mental sickness where you have your mood goes up and down drastically and it's very harmful because for me right now it's very severe in my case because if I got my mood got really really negative and really bad I would I, w I wouldn't just leave the bed I just want to stay and do nothing and feel like doing nothing and I'm basically just thinking of committing suicide again and what's suddenly my mood would suddenly become really um up and positive and i would feel like i'm glad i didn't die and life's just beautiful and there's a lot of things to experience before i die and i have made it through until now so I might as well just go and fight wow i'm just all over the place right now like literally when i talk about the negative side and how i see it from the negative perspective I would feel really down and I just don't give a shit about life but when I feel really positive, just like talking about it, I feel positive again and that's how severe it is. I'm going to see my psychiatrist soon which I'm waiting for patiently because I'm really not doing well and I know myself. I wouldn't say it if I didn't. I really know myself and I'm not well, I'm really confused. I am really confused. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I just wanted to update you guys that I'm alive, well and swell, um, yeah, so after my friend has picked me up, according to him, I, I, he took me to his place and he heard the thud, I, I told him I'm going to the toilet, and then when I went to the toilet, he heard the thud, and he wanted to go in to see what's up, but he couldn't open the door, because when I passed out, I was behind the door, and he feared that he would hurt, like, break my, I don't know, according to him, I was like, I fell down, like, in, in a certain way that he couldn't open the door, and he feared to hurt me, so, he, f he, he worried, and then he started hearing some choking noises, and he thought that I'm just, like, literally just dying there, he, d he thought that I was thrown up, I might have fell down on my back, and if I was thrown up, it would, you know, just literally just kill myself. It's not, it's not right, it's not the right position, you know. So, he heard the choking and then he saw something red on the floor and he panicked, he thought it was blood, he didn't know whether, whether that was blood or wine. So he called the ambulance and police came in because uh, when he called the ambulance they asked whether the person was aggressive. Does the person have like aggressive tendencies? Yeah, and he told them that because I do... Uh, when I get upset, I do get um, angry. For example, take um, the uh, wine bottle with me outside, or drink it outside, or I would break bottles, I would kick things, um, I would just try to look for a fight. That's how my anger issue, issues sometimes get in the way when I'm really drunk. So he said that I might be aggressive, so please came in. And according to him, I wasn't stable. Like, I don't even remember. He said that I was counting the stairs when I was walking. It would be like one, <laughs> two, but I don't even remember anything. He thought that I was conscious, but to me, I was literally not conscious. I just, I wasn't conscious at all. And it was my, weird, it was weird. It was, I think it was just like my body was walking on its own because I don't remember anything. I really don't. I don't, it's, it's odd. But to me, that night was just a very odd dream very odd dream, very weird. I still disbelieve it. I, I can't... 
don't know, probably because I got myself drunk and then got the pills, so I already was too drunk to remember myself taking the pills. So the night as a whole, I can't even remember most of the performances. So I think I was really fucked up before I even started to take the pills, which... I don't know, I just destroyed myself and he basically saved my life. And then next day when I opened my eyes, I found myself <laughs> in, the, in the hospital and I can't, I can't believe it. It's, it's like a movie. And then the nurse came in and she asked me, do you know what date it is? Do you know what's your name? Do you know where you are? Questions like that. And I was answering them happily because I, the drugs were still in my system. And I just had very good time. Like I was like, I, and I couldn't tell whether it was a shock or uh, was just like the drugs still in me. But when I left, I was like feeling right. And when I left, my friend or uh, ordered an Uber to take me home, and he wanted to stay with me more. Although I told him I'm fine, but he sensed that I wasn't. So we got in an Uber. And I struggled to put on the seatbelt, and without even realizing myself, I, I like got upset. Like I shouted and I was like, "Fucking pathetic bell!" I don't even remember what I said, but I was like really upset. And the Uber driver like was like, "Hey, mate, are you alright?" My friend was like, "Okay, I'll fix it for you, whatever." So it was weird. Like I was in a very happy mood, and then that bit was like I was suddenly like aggressive. I was like very confused mentally. And then when I went back home, another friend came by, brought some food. I, <laughs> I owe them so much. I, I owe them my life, basically. So yeah, he brought food and they stayed with me. And I, I was just like undergoing the day like nothing happened. I was like happy and like, talking to them and all. And my other friend like was sleeping in my room because he he. He had it hard, like he, since that night, he took me, he took me to his place and then to the hospital and he slept less. He, he really cared about me and he really worried. So, yeah. Um, he was resting and I stayed with my other friend making some, I don't know, clay, piece, piece of art, I'll show you. Anyway, so yeah, we stayed like this for the whole day and then when they left, they like made sure if I was alright. And I was like, yeah, I'm alright, I'm fine. I was, washing, I was washing the dishes when they were leaving. And um, a glass fell and broke. And I got angry. Like, I was like, happily saying bye or whatever. And then when the thing broke, I just like asked him to leave, just leave, just go. I'll, I'll handle it, just go. I was upset again. And then when they left, I just was blank. I don't even remember. It's so odd. Because like the thing happened on the weekend and then I underwent the week like going to uni and all the whole week and for me it felt like it's only three days. To me it felt like three days. The weekend that night and then a day I went to uni and then a weekend again. I don't even remember what I've done. That's how much shocked I was and my I wasn't like mentally stable. So yeah, I went to see a movie, like every Monday I go see or watch a movie with a friend. We went to see a movie, and then when we left, I told him, hey, I'm not fine, I'm not good, I still feel like I'm gonna kill myself and all. And he said that he wants to stay, and then when he stayed at my place, we st he stayed here, and when we woke up next morning, I was very confused, and he went to shower, and I start I took the knife, I'm, I'm paranoid because before when I used to be, when I was younger, um, my stepmother, my stepfather came, just word the camera turn off. My stepfather would come and rape me, whatever. So I grown up to be paranoid. So when I sleep, I put in my side unit a knife, a butcher knife, literally a meat knife next to me. Inside there, just in case, I don't know, I'm just paranoid a person. And yeah, he he went to shower and I, sorry, and I was li listening to some music that really always touches me. One of them is Moon River. I was listening to Moon River and took the knife and started trying to cut myself. The scars are still there, but I'll show you the... Like, some scars are old from the photo time. And then after that, like, when I'm, al when I'm alone, I sometimes just, like, do it again. Like, this one is, like, two days ago or whatever. Anyways, doesn't matter. 
yeah. So I was trying to cut myself, and he opened the door and I was like, hey, Jack, could you take, give me the towel? And I was like, trying to hide it. I'm like, what I've done? Oh my god, I just realized what I've done, and he's here, I forgot about him. And then he came, and he saw, saw it, saw it bleeding. It was like, Jack, what the fuck, what are you doing, why? And he like, started to hug me or whatever. And then I broke down. It never had happened before. I started shouting in Arabic, I was cursing in Arabic and asking him why, why me or whatever I don't even remember why Shabbat but I have it has been ages since I spoke Arabic and my mother tongue just slipped at that time when I broke down I started talking in Arabic, I don't know what even things like I've, I'm tired, I've, that's it, I've, I'm tired, I got tired I'm, I don't remember what it said but yeah he stayed with me then he left and I've been trying to hold into life since then. Things have become better, um, a bit more tolerable, I guess. Maybe it's just me, but I'm still confused. Like right now, it is. I've just finished doing the assignment, and I'm not like I'm. I really need to save. I'm financially distressed, and I haven't found a job yet. But I'm so desperate that I don't give a shit, and I want to go out into to some club that was like open 24 7 and i just don't feel right i can't sleep my sleep time is like all over the place i woke up at 5 p.m right now it's 11 i'm not sleepy and i want to go out i know what i'm thinking of I, I'm, i've even contacted a friend telling him like hey bring some weed or whatever despite me an anti-drug person i can't tell if i'm going the right way or not I feel like obviously not, but yet again, I'm very wise a person, I know how to handle things, I know like how to put a balance and like I know my limit and all, but I'm kind of, I just wanna, I just wanna forget, I just, I just wanna get anything from life that would help me forget and feel better, that's what I want, that's all I want, that's all I'm asking for. Even if I'm like going to ask you to give me any kind of advice, I don't need it because I I'm the type of person who gives advices, and my problems are so complicated that no kind of advice would help me. Is what I think, like that's what my mind is telling me. Because I know what, how life should be. I know how I should be. I know that I should stay in it positive. I know that I am positive actually, like today I was so not in mood and then well, I, I went out to the market to buy milk and I literally just smiled to the, to the shop clerk and like my, posit my positiveness spread instantly and then when I went back home and remembered that I'm financially distressed and couldn't find a job yet I gloomed again and right now I just want to go out I mean right now I'm in a mood that I'm, I don't care, it's only for tonight, I just want to chill for tonight and just have some fun. Can I have some fun? Please? I know, I don't know. And then again, I'm not even a drunker, I'm not like a party person, this is so weird of me. Like this weekend I've already went to, to, um, to a club until morning. And I wasn't depressed, I was like actually feeling good afterwards. And uh, yeah, I hope this won't be a habit. I'm. I mean, I know myself, I can't I can stop myself from making this a habit. I'm very good at like organizing my time, my life, I know how to do that. I'm pretty wise, and I don't like when my life is unbalanced, so that is good. I have a, um, a character stick characteristic of me yeah like i was so when i woke up today i was kind of so gloomy that uh, i didn't want to cook i want to go out and buy some food but i know that's like how i know myself and how to handle life like i literally just without even like overthinking and like just going out or whatever or like overthinking about it i literally just like opened the fridge and took out the food and like prepared it and all and i ended up eating the best food at home best food is at home eating at home did myself some um jam toast tea some banana milk that was nice it's better than eating um 
pancakes from McDonald's. That's what I was, what I wanted to go to. Disgusting. Yeah, this is the thing. Um, I'm all over the place. <laughs> what am I doing? I hope that I would get motivated again because every time I look at the keyboard, the music I used to create, the acoustic guitar, the memories of my YouTube, how I love to do cosplays, how I used to do music, and then started ballroom dancing and I've changed. I don't feel, I don't, I, I, I can't tell if I have no motivation or I'm just, I, I can't tell. I really need to talk to my psychiatrist. I can't tell what, it's really bothering. I can't tell if it's like losing motivation or losing interest. When I hold the guitar and play, I feel happy again. It has been so long since I hold, held the guitar. And then when I try to create music, my taste of music has changed because right now I'm so into jazz and 60s and sophisticated music, 20s to 20s to 60s, yeah. And my taste of music has changed. And when I play music, I don't feel like I don't, I don't know, and my voice is changing too. There are a lot of like reasons that I don't feel like creating music, at least at the moment. And then yet again, I know if I'm actually gonna go out there and try to find a band, I would make good money with it. Like, I know myself, I've done busking before. But it's really hard to find, like, it's, it takes, this is the thing. Anything to do with hard work, for me, is making me feel, I don't, I don't wanna work at all. <clears throat> I'm working hard for dancing, I'm working hard for uni, I'm working hard I'm trying to find a job but it's not working and I'm thinking is it my problem? You know. I'm trying so hard and trying everything online in person. You start getting self conscious, you just start thinking something wrong with me? I don't even get sad anymore. I just get I don't know. I feel I just get either indifferent about it and don't give a shit or like really upset and angry that I want to kill myself or just feel like oh fuck life so what I don't know I have a feeling no I should stop you see right now I'm just suddenly becoming really positive again and I know that right now I'm telling myself I know eventually I'm gonna find a job just have to work more and I have to take things slowly just finish any assignments and do dancing to help me relieve my stress of course and take things like slowly with YouTube to do cosplay which I'm still like I have a cosplay costume and haven't done anything and I also want to sell some things like I have changed dr drastically that even my fashion sense changed I have a lot of gothic kind of jerrock whatever I was into I have this kind of very gothic um, accessories and clothes that I want to sell. Like last time I was trying, trying to tell myself, why did I lose interest to wear this? And I wore something and I was like, ah, this is too heavy. <laughs> I just put it down. I, I don't know, I just became, I think, more simple. Um, which is good. For me, at least. Um, yeah, I should take things slowly. Because I have a to-do list I'm living on. And... It has been so long since I actually worked on it. That's why I'm all over the place. It's because I have no interest to actually open it and work on it. Because before... Like, I would tell myself, okay, today take photos of the things I'm gonna sell. This day you're gonna put them, post them online. Like, I have them on my to-do list, but I'm not doing anything, like, I'm not actually working on them. Um, yeah, right now I feel positive more. And I kind of feel like going out and wasting my money in the club or whatever is just gonna make me lose more money. And then, 
psh, again, another thought comes in and interferes and be like, you're gonna find a job eventually, just go and enjoy your night right now. I'm just gonna see myself, I think I'm gonna go out, I just can't feel it, because I woke up at 5 and I can't sleep and there's nothing to do, I don't feel like doing anything, I don't even feel like writing, which is sad, I shouldn't, I should take things slowly. I'm working on like, three novels and, excuse me, on a poetry book. And there's a book about me, so it's because I'm not organized, so there's like a lot of stress and I feel like there's a lot of things to work on and I can't finish everything, it's just too stressful. Stress comes when you are, uh, have things you haven't finished of. So I should really brace myself and just, just do it. Like, I don't like being weak, so why should I be weak? Might as well just try hard. Or die trying. That's what I used to tell myself and I forgot. If you feel bad, if you have any questions, do contact me. I don't even mind calling. Yeah, camera turn up. Um, yeah, so I don't mind calling because I see everyone as friends. We are all friends here on Earth. We are. We are. We all root from the same Mother Earth thing. We all. We're all one. But only if you can see it. Um, yeah, so do contact me if you feel like it, if you want to say something, if you need to talk to me, if you're just curious, if you just, you just want to talk to me, do contact me in any way. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I don't really believe in all of this YouTube fan, fan base, I don't even know what you call them, fan, fanship, whatever, merchandise and all of that. I don't believe in that. I just be me. I just be myself. Like when I started YouTube, YouTube changed my life. It saved me and it brought me people who gave me strength and told me that I can't escape my that life I used to live before. So right now I'm here because of you, because of YouTube, because of starting YouTube. And every time I try to think that I'm gonna stop doing YouTube. It's like saying that I'm gonna stop writing my journal, my diary. That's why I share everything happens on YouTube, because it is my diary and one day I'm gonna leave, but I'm gonna leave my story behind in here. Because there are a lot who are drama queens and think they are living worse lives. Meanwhile, there are those who are living even worse. Even for myself, I know there are those who are living even worse. That's why they inspire me to keep on going. I don't know if I'm getting sleepy or what. It doesn't make sense because I I just like literally woke up like a few hours ago. I think I'm just a bit drunk. Can I stop recording? Yeah, anyways, I know sooner or later I, I'll upload a video again. So I wouldn't stop doing YouTube videos. I can't tell when the camera turned off, but I guess I missed some discussion points, but anyways. Fuck it, I'm going out. I can't stay here anymore. So my friend found me in the changing room and took me. I apparently dropped this and broke it, my award. And I'm gonna get a new one. Can you see this red spot on it? And then my certificate too. I don't know if it's like blood or wine. It should be wine. Yeah, so I got a high distinction and I just couldn't believe it. This thing is supposed to be stuck here somewhere. This was my first bronze medal. Why am I even showing you this? It's odd. It feels odd to have awards. I don't know. What do you feel like when you have an award of something?
started exactly. thinking of a man in my head to pray to that was God. And so I start picturing Morgan Friedman, but I actually mistaken him for Denzel Washington. To Phil.